So when you're writing out a proportion, and like you saw in the previous questions, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the ratios or the representations of the part and the whole match on both sides. So say I was writing out a proportion to do with liters per minute, like my last one. So I would have to make sure that it would be liters over minutes is equal to liters over minutes. If I was doing kilometers per hour, it would be kilometers over the number of hours is equal to kilometers over the number of hours. If I wasn't dealing with different kinds of units, like liters, minutes, kilometers, hours, dollars, games, points, if I was dealing with the same unit, say I was looking at a group of people, what I would then want to make sure is that I had the bottom number represented the whole population and the top number represented the part on both sides. So the bottom is the whole and the top is the part. So this would be for things like sampling with people. You'd also use this for things like probabilities and predictions. The whole would be the number of attempts that you made. The part would be how many times you succeeded. So let's have a look at a little example here. Here's a recipe ratio. Sean's grandmother's recipe for biscuits calls for four cups of flour and six tablespoons of shortening. Write a proportion that will help Sean determine how many tablespoons of shortening will be needed for six cups of flour. Well, first of all, let's play with my highlighter here. We have four cups of flour down here, and we have cups of flour again down here. And then we have tablespoons of shortening, and we're trying to find out how many tablespoons of shortening. So that's the thing that we don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to be going flour over tablespoons or cups over tablespoons. So cup over tablespoons. I'm just going to use that as an abbreviation. So we have four cups of flour over six tablespoons is equal to, well, we need to determine how many tablespoons. So we don't know what's going to go down here. So we're just going to call that N. Ah, but we do know that we have six cups of flour. So there's our proportion. Four over six is equal to six over N. So again, we can cross multiply. I'm going to do this the long way. But if you go back and look at the previous tutorial, it'll show you some shorter ways to do this. So again, just to make things a little bit clearer, I'm going to change the color of my pen here. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I end up with 4n is equal to 6 times 6. So 4n is equal to 36. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And I end up with n is equal to, well, what's 36 divided by 4? 36 divided by 4 equals 9. So n is equal to 9. 9 what? Well, n is here. It's tablespoons. So 9 tablespoons. So let's take a look at another one. Here we have a probability prediction. So Mark and Anthony played 32 games of one-on-one -on -one basketball last week. Mark's ratio of wins to losses was 20 to 12. So 20 to 12. Now the word two is another one of those keywords where we can substitute uh, in two is the same thing 
as our line, which is the same thing as divide. And when we look at his, we're looking at wins over losses. So we have wins over losses. So we have 20 wins. We have 12 losses. Estimate the number of games you would expect Mark to win if he and Anthony played 10 more games. So how many games did they play? Well, they played 20 games and 12 games, so that's 32 games. Oh, that's also written up here. I didn't have to add it all together. So if they played 10 more games, they would play 42 games. This question, because it's a little bit more complicated than I thought. Actually, the question isn't any more complicated. However, what happened was I wrote down the wrong information at the beginning. So this goes to show you even your teacher can occasionally make a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase wins and losses because what we're actually going to look at in this question here is estimate the number of games you would expect Mark to win if he play if he and Anthony played 10 more games. So what we're actually going to be looking at is the total number of wins compared to the total games played. Okay, so how many wins did we start with? Mark won 20 out of 32 games. If they played 10 more games, that would be 32, so that would be 42 games. And we want to find out how many wins. So again, we can do this the long way or the short way. This time I'm going to do it the short way. So if this is here, I'm going to multiply these two numbers together. And then I'm going to divide by 32. So 20 times 42 divided by 32 equals, well, let's break out my calculator, 20 times 42 equals 840 divided by 32 equals 26.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to round that down to 26 games and we're going to make that approximately 26 games. So if our estimate for the number of games we would expect Mark to win if he and Anthony played 10 more games would be 26. Sorry for that. This is why you have to be careful with these questions and read them all the way through. So just to go back, we're going to take a look at how I made the mistake. What I did was I went here and I, Mark's ratio of wins to losses. Oh, that must be what I'm looking for. But I didn't finish reading the question thoroughly. Estimate the number of games you would expect Mark to win if he and Anthony played 10 more games. So like I said before, it's the number of wins that Mark gets to the total number of games played. So up here, the important numbers are 32, the total number of games played, and 20, the total number of wins Mark had. 12, the number of losses, that's just a number that was put in there to distract you. And I know that sounds a little bit unfair, but it happens. So again, read your questions carefully and don't make the mistake that I did.